Hey. Hey. Welcome back, friends. It's a little bit breezy, so I apologize for any uh, noise interference in the mic. Um, today's an exciting day. We just got our propane tank installed and filled and hooked up. The gas company came a little bit earlier and uh, got everything hooked up. So I want to do kind of a walkthrough of what they uh, did so everyone can see how it's hooked up and everything. Unfortunately, I wasn't here uh, when they were here to be able to show the process, but it's it is pretty simple laid out so thank y'all so much for joining us hope you enjoy the video this here's our tank it's a 250 gallon uh, propane tank it's a pretty good sized tank i was actually expecting it to be smaller but we went ahead and bought the tank because the difference in price between renting a tank and just buying it outright was about 500 dollars because you have the initial setup cost for rental and then it's two hundred dollars per year for as long as you have it to rent whereas when you buy it it was a couple it was about five hundred dollars more and they said we don't have to recertify it we don't have to pay any monthly fees nothing so um it seemed like a no-brainer to us so we just went ahead and, and bought the tank and that way we own it um so yeah i'm pretty excited so looking around here, they've got the copper that comes down and it converts to, I'm guessing this is a direct burial flex. Um, and that goes underground, which I'm probably gonna fill this in a little better than what they did. And it comes over behind the generator and comes up into the main regulator. So, and then out of the regulator, it feeds over into the generator course it's fed with flex that way it allows for any movement from the generator and then they popped out of the side of there with a the copper underground over to the house so we've got uh our oven inside this is the only thing that we have that's gas right now so that that takes care of that so this is uh got a shut off valve on it from the tank of course it's got one on the tank but then it's got one here and then of course we have one going into the house as well so it's pretty simple how they set it up. Um, looks like they have a vent over here. Now, I don't understand propane all that much, um, but I do know that they have vents that they put on the lines and they, they have to be away from the electrical panels and the AC vents and our uh, AC condensing units and that sort of thing, so. So this regulator, is uh the outlet pressure is nine to 13 inches of water column that's the regulator that they used i'm not sure what the pressure is on the lines i'm guessing it's probably five pounds but i don't know i really do not know that for sure now over on the transfer switch side i forgot to do it after i put the battery in the generator but i did it today I went ahead and put my three fuses in. So after the battery was installed, I put my three fuses in. One of the fuses goes to the trickle charger over on the generator. So I put the battery in a couple days ago, forgot to put these in when I did it, which is not a big deal, but it drained the battery because it's got the little indicator lights over here. So it ended up draining the battery, but it's back up and running now. The gas guy called in to Generac and went ahead and did the setup uh, process and got the activation code. So all I have to do now is take the activation code and finish setting up the generator side here. So that's what we're going to do now. Um, I'm going to get the registration code and our activation code and we'll go ahead and set this up. Hmm. 
So this is where we're gonna enter the activation code. Alrighty, that's it. So that was super simple, but it's on the um, it's not on Wi-Fi, so it doesn't work with the app. Which, like I said, we don't have home Wi-Fi anyway, so the app's not going to work for us anyway. So, um, set it up in manual. It's ready to go. We'll do a test uh, start. Of course, we're going to have to let the lines bleed because it hasn't started yet. It's got to get gas, so we're going to give it a manual try here. the starter a break but it sounds like it's uh That didn't take long at all. <laughs> That's exciting. All right, let me get uh, everything cleaned up and then we'll do a test on it real quick. One setting I forgot to mention is right down here. There's this little handle, this orange handle. It comes preset to natural gas. You'll want to spin that around to uh, for the liquid propane. The other thing is you have a switch, an auxiliary shutdown switch. You wanna make sure that's on. What some people don't know is right here on the back of the generator, there's actually another one hidden up underneath here. You wanna make sure that one's on, otherwise it will not start. All right, we got it on auto. We're gonna test it. And see, so usually it's about 20 seconds after the power is off, it'll start up and then switch over. And you'll see this plunger switch activate. So let's give it a try and see what happens. Killing power. And now we wait. Oh, good. Starts up. There we go. Running on generator power. So now all we have to do, when the power comes back on simulated, that'll switch back over. Just a second. Once it realizes there's power, it'll switch back and then the generator will power down. There you go. So it just switched back. We're back on utility power. The generator will power down in just a minute. There we go. Awesome. It is working as it should. Fantastic. It's time to button everything up. Let's see here. For the record, it's not easy doing this one-handed. <laughs> well, all I got to do now is uh, bolt it down to the pad. Now, they have holes down in the bottom of the generator. Uh, there's like three holes that you can drill through and, and do tap cons. 
I've always just used these guys right here that they hold it down to the pallet with. You can just anchor those right there, run a tap con in on all four corners. And I mean, these work great. So, I mean, that's what I've always done. You can do it however. You can do both if you want. But this is all I'm gonna do just to keep it from vibrating off the pad, so. So if you ever want to check just to make sure your generator is working, it's super easy. Just kill your main utility service disconnect. That's the main line coming in from the power company from our meter. You just kill that and that kills power to the house. And that'll send a uh, signal. It's got a utility sense in the data line. That'll send a signal to the generator. After about 10 to 20 seconds, it'll start up. Once it's running for a few seconds, it'll switch over uh, and be running on generator power. And then once the power comes back on, you can simulate that by turning the breaker back on. It'll make sure it's gonna stay on and not blink on and off. Um, so once it stays on for 15, 20 seconds, it'll switch back over. And then the generator runs for about another minute before it cuts off totally. Um, and everything's back to normal, so. Super simple. Now I, I haven't yet, but I am gonna check my power coming in. I'm gonna fire it up and check my power coming in just to make sure I've got 240 uh, good voltage coming in uh, before I have to rely on it. I just wanna check, make sure everything's working as it should, but everything seems to be good. And uh, we're all done. So we're gonna wrap this up. Thank y'all so much for watching all of these videos. Uh, this is gonna be the last generator video. It's been a long process, but we're finally done. Hopefully it's been a help to somebody. Uh, we thank you to all the new subscribers that we've gotten to our channel. Welcome aboard, and we're glad to have you, and hopefully uh, you'll enjoy our content. Thanks for watching. We'll see you next time.